This is, in my opinion, one of the best builds all of Remnant 2 has to offer when you're on Apocalypse bosses. Generally, as a content creator, we try to aim for the most flashy builds and visually impressive builds, but oftentimes, a lot of these builds are very gimmicky and lack a strong degree of consistency, which makes a lot of these flashy builds succeed extremely well against certain fights, but fall short in others. So for today's build, we'll be going over a rather less flashy build that doesn't just perform well against a few bosses, but instead it will be one of the best and most consistent build you can use in the entire game against any of the bosses in Remnant 2. So without any further ado, let's talk a little bit about today's build. Today's build will consist of a lot of old similar tricks we've used for the best builds before all of these major updates, but also include some of the newer items to make this build work even better. This build will allow us to ride at over 75% damage reduction while still being able to get well over 4000 DPS without using abilities or near 6,000 DPS when using them. But not only that, but we'll also be able to dodge with no issues. We'll have plenty of lifesteal, infinite haste, infinite bulwark, and more. Let's go over what items we'll be using for today's build and which items are key and which can be swapped out. Then we'll talk about how to best utilize it to maximize its efficiency. Starting off as always with the armor, we're yet again back with my personal favorite, the Leto Mark II set. However, I must mention that using the Leto Mark II set is not a necessity. If you hate heavy rolls and want to opt in for a medium roll build, you can use a different set of armor, such as the Bruiser Helmet, Technician Body Plate, Radiance Greaves, and Leto Mark II Gloves, which will bring you at exactly 65 weight, which just perfectly sets you at the maximum armor for a medium roll, while only losing about 3% total damage reduction, but being able to maintain a medium roll, which is a bit faster and does save a lot more stamina. Personally, I go with the Leto Mark II set as heavy rolls don't really impact me or bother me that much. And I also counteract the heavy roll cost with the Verdant Tea Concoction, but we'll get to that later. Moving on to the relics, this is a flexible pick. As you can see right now, I have the Tranquil Heart equipped, and the reason for that is that I've fought a lot of Empathy bosses today. And if you're unaware, Empathy bosses, when you utilize a relic, they heal a lot of their health back. So I found it best to just use the Tranquil Heart for the constant regeneration without having to use the relic itself. But generally, I prefer the enlarged heart. But overall, this pick here is up to you. For the relic fragments, I recommend putting on a lot of damage through critical chance and damage. And I'd either use the health relic if you want to play it safer or weak spot damage if you just want to speed kill the bosses a little bit more. Onto the primary we go and I've got the Nightfall equipped. The Nightfall has been a beastly weapon since the game has come out and has survived a really strong nerf and it still thrives as one of the best weapons in the game. The two big DPS dogs in the game are usually the Nightfall and the Crescent Bow. But personally, I do prefer the Nightfall as the Nightfall makes fights even easier than the Crescent Bow due to its infinite ammo and high lifesteal mod that I feel is the best mod in the entire game. The Crescent Bow will do higher DPSs than the Nightfall, but of course, hitting shots with the Crescent Bow is far harder than hitting shots with the Nightfall. And the Nightfall also contains a high amount of ammo, which makes clearing smaller enemies a much easier job, and just overall offers a lot more consistency when fighting any of the bosses in the game. Now for the Mutator, we use the Momentum just to pump up that damage as much as possible. When using the mod for this weapon, we'll easily pump up Momentum to maximum stacks, which will increase our Nightfall's critical chance and critical damage by a whole 30%, which is quite amazing honestly. For the melee weapon, we use the Krell Axe with the Tainted Blade Mutator. Krell Axe can actually add a decent amount of DPS to our character, and every time we hit a simple charged attack on the boss, we inflict the boss with both a 10 second shock damage dot as well as a 20 second corroded dot. You can use other mutators however if you feel like it, such as the transference mutator to help you refill ammo if low ammo is being an issue for you. For the secondary, we use the nebula once again, both for its extra passive DPS that allows you to deal damage without even having the weapon in hand. But not just that, 
but I also like to use the Nebulous mod after I've used the Nightfalls mod. The reason for that is that its passive damage will help us generate mod power, allowing us to cycle out Nightfall mod with a lot more ease. I equip the Nebula with the Harmonizer, also to assist the Nightfall generate its mod power. But you can also throw in the Prophecy or the Feedback, whatever you feel like it. Now onto the Amulet and Rings we go. Now this is where we use the new items to our advantage. First off, let's talk about the the atonement fold ring. This ring will self-inflict bleed damage and also increase our critical chance by 10%. Now why is this a win-win situation for us when we're taking damage from this ring? If you've seen my last build videos, then you'll know. With the ring self-inflicting damage, it means that the hardcore metal band will trigger due to the atonement fold self-damage, which means we'll be gaining 5 stack of bulwark 24-7 as we're constantly taking damage, meaning we gain a whopping 25% damage reduction flat out just by combining these two items. But here's what you might not know. This amulet right here, the Nightweaver's Grudge. The Nightweaver's Grudge gains a 20% crit chance and haste when within 15 meters of an entity suffering from a status effect. Well, and guess who's suffering from a bleeding status effect? We are. Which means, by self-inflicting bleed damage from the Atonement Fold Ring, we're gaining 10% critical chance from it, 25 damage reduction from the Hardcore Metal Band, and now, 20% critical chance and a permanent haste buff from the Nightweaver's Grudge, which just makes us beastly all around. High crit chance, high damage reduction, and really fast. And for the last two rings, these are rather flexible. These rings you can opt in for whatever you prefer, Personally, I go for the Probability Cord and the Xenia's Malice as they are the two best range damage rings and will really help you dish out more damage. You can opt in for, let's say, a Stone of Malevolence to assist us loop our mods with more ease, or you can use the Archer's Crest if you're using the bow, and so on. You get the point. And onto the archetypes, we've got both the Alchemist and the Hunter. The reason for the Alchemist is that the Alchemist is the best well-rounded archetype. We gain extra damage, critical chance, and when using the four concoctions, we can also gain extra armor, damage reduction, movement speed, recoil control, health, blah blah blah. There are dozens of different concoctions, I won't go over all of them. And for the Hunter, we opt in for the Hunter for the simple extra range damage output. If you really want to play it extra safe, for example, let's say you can't afford dying at all, such as a hardcore character, then you'll want to opt in for the Medic with the Healing Shield and you're pretty much near immune. You'll kill bosses a bit slower, but you'll also definitely be a lot safer. Also, if you change out your secondary out of Nebula onto a secondary that has Healing Shot, for example, Example, then yeah, you're pretty much immune as long as you don't make a bad mistake. For traits, I'd recommend Strong Back to max out on your armor output, as well as Fortify, Bark Skin, and Vigor to become extra defensive. Also bring Regrowth to at least 8 points to counteract the Atonement Fold self damage, and the rest is as you see fit. I enjoy the Siphoner to make life a tiny bit easier, and the Spirit to loop the Nightfall as much as I can. But play around with this if you're unsure what to pick. And lastly for the concoctions, this will also come down to personal preference. I recommend Dark Cider always, as well as Meat Shake if you've got it. I enjoy the Verdant Tea to counteract my heavy rolls, and the Health Concoction to give us 30 or so extra health, which goes a long way. But use these as you see fit, depending on the fight you're taking. Now as far as utilizing this build, it's fairly simple. Most of your damage output will come out of certain burst phases, which will revolve around the Nightfall mod. For the optimal burst, I recommend mixing in Frenzy Dust with either Hunter's Focus or Hunter's Mark, and then pop in the Nightfall mod, and by using this combination is when you're able to dish out nearly 6000 damage without much of an effort. So anytime you're fighting a boss and you know those key points at which they're vulnerable and you can dish out damage, is when you'll take most of their health down. And after these burst phases, you can either opt in to just keep blasting the boss down and try to speed kill it, or if you want to play it extra safe, you can rely on your Nebula mod to recharge your Nightfall mod. And during these phases, you can play extra passive and perhaps just focus on dodging, but either way, you should only really die if you try to speed kill a boss and don't pay enough attention to the fight, or if you get caught in those hard hitting situations that act as sort of a one hit mechanic. Either way, if you're a hardcore player, I'd recommend swapping out Hunter for either Medic or Handler 
to be able to survive those sort of mechanics. So that'll be all for today's video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one.